This was the moment the US said it hit a popular mobilization forces base near Iraq's Al Qaim border crossing with Syria. The airstrikes happened in the early hours of Monday, targeting both sides of the crossing. On the Iraqi side, a base used for drone attacks was hit. A statement from the US Department of Defense said, The targets were selected because these facilities are utilized by Iran-backed militias that are engaged in unmanned aerial vehicle attacks against US personnel and facilities in Iraq. The Iraqi military spokesman issued a strong statement. We condemn the U.S. air attack that targeted a site last night on the Iraqi-Syrian border, which represents a blatant and unacceptable violation of Iraqi sovereignty and Iraqi national security in accordance with all international conventions. Two groups backed by Iran were targeted, Kataib Hezbollah and Kataib Saeed al-Shahada. Reaction from the groups was swift. Qataib as Sayyid as Shahada have actually reacted very strongly, promising an open war against uh, U.S. targets within Iraq itself. Now, the real concern here is one simply of escalation. The Iranians also reacted. The U.S. still continues the wrong path in the region. What we see today is not only the sanctions, but also following the wrong policies in previous administrations in regard with actions they carry out in the region. Some analysts suggest Iraq must have been consulted before the strike. This is only the second time that President Biden has used military force. As was mentioned earlier, the first strike was almost exactly four months ago, the end of, uh, the end of uh, February. I also think it's significant that he attacked Iranian-backed forces at the same time the negotiations are going on. What level of coordination remains unclear. The popular mobilization forces comes under control of the Iraqi government. It was only a few days ago Prime Minister Mustafa al khadami praised the paramilitary group in public. However, there's long been some concern about who certain groups within the umbrella organization actually answer to, whether it's Iran or Iraq. It's clear that the popular mobilization forces are part of its security structure. So in effect, the US bombed an ally. But the U.S. was clear that the popular mobilization fighters had attacked U.S. targets and the bombing was in response to that. And with a response promised by the group, it's likely this will further divide the U.S. and Iraq and opinion on the U.S. role in the country. Imran Khan, Al Jazeera, Baghdad. Let's go to our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett. Kimberly, good to see you. Why did the U.S. think these airstrikes were necessary right now? Well, as the Pentagon statement has been very clear, the U.S. President Joe Biden believes that these strikes are defensive in nature. And it is important to note that this is the second time since the start of the year that this type of action has been taken. The argument being that these are attacks on U.S. personnel that are being conducted by Iran-backed militia. And as a result, the United States is trying to send a very clear message that this type of behavior will not be tolerated. It's also important to note that this comes at a very delicate time because, of course, the United States is trying very hard to revive the discussions that have been ongoing, a sixth round, a seventh to, to be scheduled in Vienna to limit Iran's nuclear program. And the feeling is that uh, as these talks are being conducted, it's important to send a very clear message to Iran where it stands, what the United States will tolerate and will not tolerate. So uh, this is something that comes at a, a delicate time, a fragile time, but the United States feeling that it needs to send a message of force. And there's been some reaction as well from people within Biden's own party. What have they been saying? Yeah, the president's own Democratic Party, some top senators as well as members of Congress, uh, Chris Murphy in the U.S. Senate, Ilhan Omar in the House of Representatives, not happy about the conduct by the White House that it has once again acted uh, without the authorization of Congress. And the fear is in all of this is not only the impact on civilian casualties potentially, but also the fact that this would fall under potentially jurisdiction that requires authorization under war powers, and that has not been sought. So the United States uh, looking very much as if it is taking an aggressive posture and the U.S. Congress 
demanding answers. So we're watching very carefully, not only to see what the uh, briefings will be that will take place on Capitol Hill and whether or not that will satisfy members of Congress, but also we're watching carefully at the upcoming White House press briefing to see what the White House press secretary has to say and the justification for this action. Many thanks for that. White House correspondent Kimberly Halkett.